So this video is going to be about lipids, specifically fatty acids. So lipids are a very diverse class of biomolecule, and the only thing that really groups them together um, is the fact that they're all hydrophobic. So we know that hydrophobic means that these molecules don't like to be around water, so if they're given away to avoid being in contact with water molecules, then they're going to avoid it. So these two molecules um, are both fatty acids, and the reason that they're called fatty acids is because of the presence of this carboxyl group on the end right there. Uh, and we know from the video on functional groups that this carboxyl group can act as an acid by donating this proton. So that's why they're called fatty acids. Um, however, these fatty acids aren't found um, typically in this form within our body because free fatty acids are typically very reactive and we want to avoid reacting with um, just random things in our cells uh, so we avoid making anything that's going to be harmful. So what we're going to do to kind of avoid that is we're going to connect fatty acids to a molecule of glycerol. And when we do that, that allows us to form a storage uh, form of fatty acids called triacylglycerols that then we can store um, and keep those fatty acids sequestered away and prevent them from interacting with things that we don't want them to interact with. So how does this happen? So this is going to happen through a dehydration reaction or also a condensation reaction is another way to call it. So we're going to take the hydroxyl group from the fatty acid and then the proton from the hydroxyl group on the glycerol and pull out a water molecule. So when we do that, we're going to form something that we can see right here, which is called an ester linkage. So we're going to do that with um, all the fatty acids that we would attach to our glycerol molecule. So we can show it right here as well. And then here's the other ester linkage. So um, glycerol molecules are capable of holding three fatty acids. And something unique about um, triacylglycerols is that those three fatty acids do not have to all be the same. So um, right here, I've drawn two different fatty acids to illustrate that they um, can be different. So this first fatty acid um, is just a normal standard fatty acid. There's no double bonds, there's no triple bonds, um, and so that means that every carbon atom is going to be bound to the most hydrogen atoms that it can be bound to. So we can also say that this fatty acid is saturated with hydrogen atoms, um, and so that means that this is going to be a saturated fatty acid. So saturated fatty acids um, are typically animal fats. Um, so animal fats tend to have no double bonds, no triple bonds, um, and have as much hydrogen as possible. So moving on to this one down here, we can uh, see pretty easily that there's a double bond in here. So when there's a double bond, that keeps those carbon atoms from binding to as many hydrogens as they can. So they're no longer saturated, so we call these unsaturated fatty acids. Um, and those are typically going to be uh, plant fats. So like plant oils, um, olive oils, things like that are going to have unsaturated fatty acids. So this unsaturated fatty acid is actually a cis unsaturated fatty acid because these two carbons right here, uh, I'll draw it down here for a better picture, they're on the same side of this double bond. So they're going to be cis. So there's also something called a trans fatty acid, which I'm sure most of you have heard of because it's something that you want to avoid. So similarly to the cis unsaturated fatty acids, trans unsaturated fatty acids don't have the maximum number of hydrogen atoms attached. But what's different is the orientation of atoms around this double bond. So in the trans fatty acid, these two carbons are on opposite sides of the double bond. And so you see this um, when you are processing foods, so you're hydrogenating vegetable oils, um, or you're processing other foods, baked goods, and things like that. And so what's dangerous about trans fats is that um, they're not natural, so we don't produce trans fatty acids naturally within our bodies. We only make cis fatty acids. So when uh, we introduce trans fats into our bodies through our diet, uh, our body's not really sure what to do with those because we don't make them naturally, and so we're uh, not equipped with the tools that we would need to be able to uh, break this down and actually get some use out of it. So they end up just kind of building up and just doing more harm than good within our bodies. So um, 
Also, saturated fats, they um, can lead to cardiovascular disease if you eat them in too large of quantities because they'll build up in your blood vessels and form plaques, and that can be really dangerous as well. Um, so just to review one last time, we have saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids are going to have no double or triple bonds, whereas unsaturated fatty acids will have at least one double or triple bond. Those are going to be, um, if they're produced naturally, they're going to be cis double bonds. If they um, are produced through hydrogenation processes of vegetable oils and things like that, then they could be trans double bonds, which, um, like I said, we cannot um, handle. We don't know how to break those down within our bodies. And once we get these fatty acids into our bodies, we want to keep them from reacting with other things. So we're going to attach them to a glycerol to produce triacylglycerol, which allows us to uh, store these fatty acids in a way that is going to be useful to us and prevent them from forming any um, unwanted byproducts by reacting with other molecules. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.